Do you know how many different cribbage hands there are? This many. 20,358,520 different six card hands that can be dealt from a standard deck of 52 cards. That's quite a few. Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about flushes and why they're not really that important, but also why they can be. And I know that's kind of a non-committal stance, but I'll explain. And before I get into the video, just a quick thank you for all of the likes and subscribes. I really appreciate it. I don't earn any money from this channel, I just do it because I enjoy cribbage and I hope to pass along some tips and info that maybe you didn't previously know. So thank you. If you've come this far, you probably already know what a flush means in cribbage, but let's quickly blast through it anyway. A flush is four or more cards all of the same suit, for example four diamonds. If you hold four cards of the same suit in your hand, you score four points. If the cut card, some call this the flipped card, is also the same suit, you score five points. Flushes aren't counted during the pegging phase, and in the crib hand, only a five card flush will count. The four cards in the crib and the cut card must all be the same suit. I don't know about you, but this has always been somewhat of a weird rule to me personally, when you consider that you get to pick the four cards you keep in your hand, while only two are your choice for the crib. So given that crib flushes are less common, in fact they're downright rare, I think a four card flush in the crib should count. But I digress. To talk about flushes, we need to do some math. So we're going back to math class. The way we calculate how many different cribbage hands there are is by using a combination formula, and it looks something like this. n choose k. n is the number of objects in our set, and k represents the number of objects we're choosing from that set. The formula is n exclamation mark, <laughs> just kidding, that's the symbol for factorial, n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial. If you remember back to math class, factorial is a mathematical operation that says to multiply all whole numbers from our chosen number down to one. So four factorial, as an example, means four times three times two times one, that equals 24. So in this case, our n value, the number of objects in our set is 52, because there are 52 cards in a deck of cards. Our k value is six, the number of cards we're choosing out of those 52. So when we punch that into our calculator, it looks something like this. And our calculator gives us 20,358,520, the total number of possible six card hands. Now let's calculate how many flushes exist. Let's start with four cards of the same suit. Out of 20,358,520 possible hands, how many of those contain four cards of the, of the same suit? like this example. We use the same combination formula. So in this case, our n value, the number of objects in our set, is 13, because there are 13 cards in each suit. Our k value, the number of objects we want from that set, is 4, so 13 choose 4. But we're not done. We need two more cards to make up our six card hand, and those two cards can come from any of the remaining 39 cards in the deck. So 39 choose two. And last, there are four suits, and we're choosing one of them. So when we put that into our calculator, we get 529,815 times four, and that equals 2,119,260. That's how many six card hands contain four cards of the same suit. Now we can calculate the same for five cards of the same suit. So same idea. Here's our example. Our jack of spades becomes a jack of diamonds. Our n value, the number of objects in our set, is still 13, 13 cards in each suit. Our k value, the number of objects we want from that set, is now five. So 13 choose five. We need one more card to make up our six card hand. And that card can come from any of the remaining 39 cards in the deck. So 39 choose one. And last, there are four suits, and we're choosing one of them. That gives us 200,772 six-card hands that contain five cards of the same suit. 
Now we want to calculate the number of hands where all six cards are the same suit. Our n value, number of objects in our set, is still 13. The value, the number of objects we want from that set, is now 6. So 13 choose 6. We don't need any more cards to make up our hand because we already have 6. So that gives us 6,864 hands where all six cards are the same suit. Now we can add those together Davis, to give us the total number of hands that have, contain a flush possibility. We add our numbers up and we get 2,320,896 hands that contain a flush. We're almost done the math. There's just two more calculations to go. To determine the likelihood of getting delta hand that contains a flush, we take the total number of flush possibilities, which we know is 2,326,896, and we divide it by the total number of possible hands, 20,358,520. That gives us 11.4%, which means approximately one out of every nine hands will contain a flush possibility. Conversely, the number of hands that won't contain a flush it's 88.6%, or approximately 8 out of every 9 hands won't contain a flush. We can view this as a pie chart. Our pie is the total number of possible 6-card hands, 2,358,520, and 89% of that pie is hands that don't contain a flush, 3 or fewer cards of the same suit. The small slice of pie that contains a flush possibility is 11%, those are hands that contain four or more cards of the same suit. If we look at the 89% of hands that don't contain a flush, if flush points cannot be scored with these hands, that means suit is irrelevant and we can get rid of it, leaving us only with card rank, ace, two, three, and so on. So those 18 million hands can be distilled down to 18,395 hands. If you've ever seen the number of hands referred to as 18,395, this is where that number comes from. This number represents nearly 90% of all possible cribbage hands, unsuited, ace, 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 two, two, all the way to queen, queen, and four kings. So now we know cribbage flushes represent a small proportion of total possible hands. On average, one out of every nine hands will contain flush but that doesn't necessarily mean they should be disregarded entirely. So let's look at one example of a hand that contains a flush and see what we should discard. Our hand here is two of clubs, three of diamonds, three of spades, and the five, seven, and jack of diamonds. So we have four diamonds here, which is a flush. Let's see if keeping the flush is our best strategy. And to do that, we'll calculate the expected averages. As dealer, we see that keeping the flush and discarding the 2-3 to our own crib is our best option because it will maximize our total point potential. We would be keeping, on average, nearly 11 points in our own hand and on average 7 points in our crib hand. The expected average for this hand is 17.83 points, which is over 2 points more than the next best option, keeping the 2-3-3 jack and discarding the 5-7 to our crib. So keeping the flush is the way to go here, as dealer. As the non-dealer, the best option is to keep the 3357 in our hand and discard 2 jack to the dealer. So keeping the flush is not the best option here. In fact, if we were to keep the flush here, we would be losing out on one point. We're essentially giving it away, and we don't really want to do that. Remember, all it takes to win a game is one more point than your opponent. So we want to keep all the points that we can and try not to give any. So to recap, there are 20 million different six card cribbage hands. Of those, approximately one out of every nine hands will contain a flush, 11%. 89% of the total possible six card cribbage hands will do not contain a flush. So that's approximately eight out of every nine hands. Of these 18 million hands, suit doesn't matter because flush points cannot be scored. Therefore, only rank matters. For example, ace, two, three, four, and so on. 
And that leaves us with 18,395 unsuited hands from four aces and two twos to two queens and four kings. For flush hands, the best strategy is to use expected average to calculate which discard option will maximize your hand point potential. So flushes don't happen that often. You might get one in a game, you might even get two, but the next game you play, you according to the law of averages, you probably won't get one. So flushes are still important, but they're not super important. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you really liked it, please subscribe. See you.